start. So um, just want to say, first of all, welcome and thanks to you guys for coming. I think a few more people will probably join us as we go, but we really did intend to um, keep these small so that you have a chance to talk to Dr. Atkin and each other as well. And for those of you who don't know, and I don't know that I know, I recognize a couple names, but I don't know many of you. My name is Carolyn Smith. I work with the WMU Alumni Association. And Kirby up there in the polo is, uh, he's also with the Alumni Association. So we wanted to get some folks together and, um, a couple months ago, we sent out a survey to alumni, and some of you hopefully filled that out, but um, the goal in that survey was to kind of improve the Bronco experience for everyone, so, um, and the alumni experience, and part of that was asking people to share some thoughts and an open-ended question about who really made a significant impact on their student experience when they were at Western, and we had some names that were mentioned more than once. So I think you can guess who one of those folks was. Um, and I, I was not at all surprised after I looked at her LinkedIn profile. So she's got a lot of followers. Um, before we jump into all of that stuff, I just, like I said, we are gonna record this, so we'll put it somewhere eventually. Um, but you guys are welcome to jump in, unmute yourself and talk. You can type in the chat feature if you'd rather do that. I think that's easier when it's bigger, but this is a pretty small group, so feel free to do that if you just have any questions. And we'll give you a chance to talk at the end, too. But we were, I was going to ask Dr. Atkins some questions first, kind of reconnect with her and see what's going on at Western. So um, I would guess most of you know her and know that she's a professor of marketing at the College of Business. Um, and in addition to teaching coaches, student teams, regional and national advertising competitions, and advises, she told me this was new, the student chapter of the American Marketing Association, and served as vice president for collegiate relations of the AMA. Um, so, like I said, I have looked at your LinkedIn profile, and I know from that that alumni very much appreciate you staying in touch with them. Um, and that you have really given students a real world kind of experience in the classroom, drawing on your knowledge from actually being in the industry. So um, I will stop talking now and ask you some questions. So we're gonna feature you now. Um, and before I ask you about- Did you start Western, recording? I did start recording, yes. <laughs> so be careful now. Okay. Be careful what you say. Just kidding. See, they're all laughing because they know I swear in class all the time. <laughs> it's kind of a kind it can't of a get worse than what we already had. So <laughs> go for it. Edit. <laughs> Whoever edits us afterwards will be like beep beep. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, and I we want to share memories about Western, so all of you can share stuff too. But before we do that, I wanted to ask Dr. Atkin because it's you know the thing we all have to talk about right now. So the pandemic really has obviously impacted all of us as we sit at home working, how, what's the impact been on the marketing program and on students? And for you, as you switched to full-time virtual. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. <laughs> um, and one this, day. I think, yeah, the spring semester, um, I think we all just kind of did the best we could. Um, and then summer, uh, I did. A, I made a lot of improvements to uh, the the e-learning portal that we use for delivering. So a, a lot of I had to learn some new tools and some new things in e-learning. Uh, still have a long way to go in terms of improvement, but um, but I, I generally try and keep the class in terms of structure and what's required and what the students what I hope the students will learn and get out of their classes. I hope that you know I try and keep that as similar as possible. So. So in market research, I think all of you had me for market research, maybe for most most of you. Anyway, so there's usually a, a, a class project where we um, interview consumers about some um, consumer behavior issue or marketing related issue. And of course, this semester, this past semester in the summer, we did something on COVID-19 just to see how people's shopping behaviors had changed, um, what they were spending their time on more. 
Uh, when did they think things were going to change? How hopeful were they? How, um, how much trust did they have in various sources of information? Um, so, you know, they, they did some learning relative to that. And, and that's the same sort of situation I would do if we were in person. We'd still pick a topic. Everybody would develop questions. We'd talk to consumers. We'd develop an online survey. And then I would use all that data that we collected as a basis for teaching them how to do statistics, some basic stuff. So that was, I would think, probably the most challenging was um, if you guys remember being in the computer lab and learning how to do SPSS and doing your homework there and me floating around and going, yeah, you might not want to use that variable. Um, you know, that was really more challenging because the students had to download the software themselves and I couldn't be there to sort of look over their shoulder or perch on their shoulder and tell them, you know, hey, that's probably not a good idea or a bad idea. So I had to do some reformulation of stuff, but uh, for the most pack feedback feedback has been pretty good from both the spring and summer sessions um, but more improvements to go and then you know for, that's teaching wise and, and generally consumer wise um, I don't know my the lighting here isn't that bad so you know I've had like one haircut and as you can tell like nice bangs Adkin um, you know it's you know I've, I'm facing the same situation that these guys are all facing so I'm working from home I'm going to the store once every couple of weeks my car, I don't think, it, my car's like, what the heck is going on? I need, it's, I was supposed to have an oil change this month and I'm like, I'm not even close to the number of miles. Yeah, <laughs> Artie's like, yep, me too. So, you know, there's just all, all sorts of stuff. But I'm, you know, the dogs are getting more walks. They're probably like, come on lady, for, let's stop this. Um, trying to get outside more, you know, just to be, not to be housebound, so. Yeah. Um, all the same, all the same issues that I think consumers are facing, you know, I'm facing too. As you know, in terms of our impact on our department or our college, it's you know, it remains to be seen. I'm pretty optimistic. Uh, the College of Business students don't get there until they're usually juniors. I mean, at least full time until their majors and whatnot. And I don't think juniors and seniors are going to take a gap year or a gap semester. They are going to power through because they want to be done. Um, we might lose some freshmen. And we might lose some sophomores, but um, my, you know, the I think the core of our of our student body in the Hayworth College of Business is going to be pretty pretty similar. I don't think we're going to lose that many. We're going to lose some international students for sure. Right? But I think the college over, I think the university overall, that's where they're we're really hurting the most is um, our international students, especially at the graduate level. Yeah, for sure. And I know you said for fall you're full virtual still. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I didn't really have much of a choice there. So um, when fall classes, as you, you know, most of these guys know, when you're registering for fall, that's usually spring, right? So uh, registration opened up in March, right before COVID, and people were registering for classes, and my, my research classes were all full. Uh, so I have 35 students, I think, in all three sections. And there's only three classrooms in HCOB that can accommodate 20 students and only one and one that can accommodate 70 so um so any if you have a class over 30 students if you have a class over 20 students let's put it that way um you're going to be hurting for classroom space within hcob now there might have been some place else on campus for um, me to go but since they're one night a week um, i have a monday night tuesday night class and then um i think my other class is monday wednesday afternoon there it's it's going to be really easy for me to convert or transition to online so so yeah so august will be spent revamping some more e-learning stuff and learning some more tools did you uh learn anything interesting in your research with consumer behavior or not ready to share that yet uh oh well it's already it's over and done with so um <laughs> i don't i don't i don't know if, how interesting it is but you know in terms of um, sources that people trust. I mean, people trust scientists and they actually trust the medical community. They don't trust anything that comes out of any politician's mouth at any level for the most part, um, with the exception of, I think, in the state of Michigan, there's been quite a, um, a rally around Big Gretch. So I think that's, um, I think that's good. Um, uh, more time spent at home cooking, <laughs> not a surprise. Um, streaming video, you know, media usage has gone way up. Um, people are, you know, people, especially families, get really frustrated 
Um, if you have a, a large household and everybody's vying for internet space or bandwidth, I think that's that's been really problematic, especially for kid, for younger kids who need to be on for school or whatnot. Um, but even for the college students, you know, if they don't have access or they don't have a really stable connection, I think that's been really frustrating. Um, what else? They think it's going to be about 12 months on average before we quote unquote get back to normal, whatever that means. Um, I'm trying to remember. They are still really worried about contracting it, and they're worried for their family members to contract it too. So, so yeah. I mean, the you know typical sense. nothing nothing terribly surprising to be honest. Um, a lot of um, and there's a lot of different secondary research providers that are out there doing similar types of research. So it was um, it was good for them to see that the things that they were finding also matched up with when they interviewed consumers or when they were looking at secondary sources of information out of the library Makes or sense. on the library's databases. I shouldn't say in the library because who is the library? <laughs> in the library. That's true, especially right now. <laughs> Terrible. That was my favorite place to hang out when I was an undergrad. But I'm weird. Right, Carmen? <laughs> I'm a nerd. So it is the way it is. <laughs> oh, the student ambassadors just did a survey and I learned that that was a very popular place to take a nap. So mm -hmm. they'll, they'll miss that. Mm -hmm. there, no, they did that. They redid the first floor. Like I hadn't been in there for a while because typically I would take students over and have uh, one of the business librarians do like a little tutorial on the databases. Now she comes to um, HCOB or we meet in a different computer lab. But I went, walked over there one time and when they were just starting to redo the main floor and I walked in, I was like, whoa, this furniture is cool. <laughs> but yeah, very much more comfortable than, you know, hard wooden stools at a, at a wood table. <laughs> HCOB was rated as a big no for napping. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, speaking of that, one of the reasons that we did want to get people on and give you a chance to talk was to share some memories, too, of course, and that'll probably bring up some good memories for alumni. So can you start by telling us how you ended up working for Western? <laughs> I usually share this story, but um, with most people, because um, on the first day of class, I usually have students do like a little white note card. And one of the things is ask me any question about me personally. So because I'm pretty transparent and uh, I'll answer just about any question that they ask. But um, I usually the, the story, the story goes that I was in my third year at Michigan State in my PhD program. And I had a, a good friend who was fourth year and he was basically on the job search market. And he and his wife and his family, they lived in the East Lansing area and his wife was into uh, government relations and things like that. And she really wanted to stay in Michigan. And so my friend Jay was looking for a job and I had happened to be just perusing a job site. And I saw that Western had an open position um, in the marketing department. And it was, um, it was, I don't want to, I don't think it was really a, a generalist type of position. It might have had something to do with sales um, or it might have had some sort of wordage that had something to do with, you know, um, being able to, t to teach in sort of a niche area of their own specialty. So uh, my friend Jay was really into media and had been an executive at TNT for a number of years. And I, so I said, Jay, I saw this job at, Mar at Western, maybe you should apply for that. And he said, well, send me the link. <laughs> so I went looking for it and I, it like disappeared. I couldn't find it anywhere. So I ended up contacting the chair of the marketing department at that time, which was Dr. Brogowitz, Andy Brogowitz. And I said, hey, I, I understand that there's a position open there. And what my friend, <laughs> like my friend is, uh, is kind of interested in applying. So um, can you tell me a little bit more about it or can you send me the job posting so I can relay it to him? And and Andy replied back, and I and Hardy, I don't know if you remember Andy Brogowitz. I don't, Carolyn, I don't know if you've been around long enough so. to know who Andy Brogowitz was. Some of these guys might remember Andy um, back in the day. Um, he he had sort of a, a really dry sense of humor, and it kind of seemed like you know you either really loved him or you didn't like him too much. Kind of, I don't know. He he just he just <laughs> rubbed people the wrong way sometimes. But for some reason, we just we just clicked. And he's like, well, why don't you apply for the job? And I'm like, because I'm third year and I there's no way I'm not ready for the job market yet but I applied anyway and Jay didn't it was Jay wasn't interested he didn't think it aligned with his interests so I applied for it 
and I came and interviewed and I was up against Steve Newell, Dr. Newell. <laughs> and uh, so it was like no contest. I'm like, Dr. Newell had already been um, out and teaching and researching and was phen and phenomenal. And so I knew he was going to get the job. But the following year, another position opened up that, that was, that Andy basically said was um, developed for my experience and my expertise. And they needed somebody in the advertising and promotion program because I believe they lost a faculty member, somebody who they had hired only st stuck around for like a year and then um, decided to leave. So there was an open position. And so I came back and I kind of interviewed again, but um, Andy and I had a lot of um, emails, maybe because, and we maybe we got along so well because both at the time I had a Polish last name and, you know, Brogowitz and Rosnowski kind of sounded, you know, like we were kin and uh, we both really, really loved the Red Wings. And so there was a lot of analogies to like, oh, I'll come back to campus. I'll make sure that we don't check you into the boards like Yuri Fisher and put you through the glass. And so that's, um, that's the long winded version. So I, I came twice, really. I interviewed for a job I knew I wasn't ready for. And then um, I kind of came for a job that I was ready for and was ready for me, basically. So um, it was really, really good timing. I didn't have to go out on the, on the job market like a lot of PhD students do. Um, I saw the job market. I went with some of my friends to the big conferences and um, I'm so glad I didn't have to do that. <laughs> so I'm really thankful to Dr. Brogowitz. He was, he was awesome. And he protected nice me and, and mentored me and um, uh, I, still, I still keep in touch with him too. That's awesome. It was yeah. meant to be. It was meant to be. <laughs> it was meant to be there. Um, you know, I, I had an undergrad degree in marketing. I did my MBA um, with a marketing concentration. When I was looking for a, a grad school program, a PhD program, I debated about going back to marketing um, into a business school for a PhD. And then I thought, you know, I, I don't think I'm going to learn all that much more than I already do from the master's level. So I went the communication route because at the time I was in the advertising industry and a lot of programs around the United States, they, they house advertising curriculum within their communication um, college and close to journalism. And I'm, because I'm from the business school, of course, I don't believe it belongs there. I believe it belongs in marketing because it's a, it's a function of marketing. It's not a function of um, journalism. There's an element of that, but it's, there's, yeah, I just don't think it belongs there. So I was really, I was really pushing to get into a business school anyway, as a, as a new PhD student. So I didn't want to go to a comm school. I wanted to go someplace where I was with my marketing peeps. I miss my creative folks for, for sure, because that's the one thing that the communication side sort of aligns really well with. Um, but I, I, get a, I get a sense of it from some students who, who have a creative background, who have that innate ability, but I also get to see gra um, graphic design students too. So it's, it's always nice. I wish we had more integration. We still don't have the kind of integration that I would like, like cross-disciplinary studies with um, comm or PR or graphic design. but. I can only bang my head against the wall so many times. And it's coming, right? I know. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Maybe, who knows? Yeah, maybe now, maybe now will be the, uh, the the chance to get some interesting stuff done. Yeah. But I'm already on to other things, so it's like I don't know. If I want to go backwards. <laughs> Thanks for the clap party. <laughs> People will want that. Uh, everything's digital now, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sure. I, so now I have to ask you this, though, and this is where you can share your crazy stories. Do you have any memorable or funny or completely bizarre memories from your first few years? And then from your entire time, but I'm curious <laughs> about your first few years, too. Uh, my first few years, no. I mean, uh, it was all about just trying to get acclimated. Um, I would say... Um, I don't know. My, uh, my, my dad passed away the, my second semester. Oh. So that was really, I mean, that's, that doesn't sound like, hey, that's a happy thing. But it was, you know, that was kind of weird and challenging. And um, to have like sort of the HCOB family and your students sort of wrap around you, that's kind of cool. Um, but I have, you know, we do, we would do senior, we would do senior send offs at the end of the year um, for the ad students. And, um, you know, it's always fun to teach on days like, um, What's that one in March? St. Patrick's Day. Oh. <laughs> I, uh, 
I held class on St. Patrick's Day with uh, my, my seniors one time, and they warned me that it was not going to be a good idea, and uh, it wasn't a good idea. Right, Tiffany? That was your year, I think. I think that was, I think that was your year. Matt Hiss and Chris Sweet. Oh, I know yep. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I asked him about St. Patrick's Day, his senior year in Dr. J's class. That was real fun. <laughs> Is that a one you can't share? <laughs> I can't really we, won't, share. we won't make but, it. But I mean, there was, I mean, there's a lots of, we had lots of good times. You know, most of these, most of these folks, um, well, many of them did uh, case competitions and participated either nationally or regionally or even with a client. Um, so those are always, those are always fun or even came back and judged. I think Jeff's came back and judged a couple times um, students. So, so those are always fun, but yeah, that, I mean, nothing, nothing terribly out of the ordinary and, no. and crazy. I wish I, I would have known Chris was Buster Bronco when he was, that would have been fun. So I forgot. He did so you that. So you didn't have one of those weird students with weird stories in the classroom? I don't know. Can't pick I, don't know. One. Weird. I mean, yeah, I taught at nine o'clock in the morning and people would come in reeking of alcohol and, and <laughs> marijuana, but I mean, it's, <laughs> I don't know the, how weird that The norm? Is. That was the norm? Um, they, they come in in their pajamas. Um, no, I, you know, I, the people, they, everybody comes from such different backgrounds and you know I'm not one to judge but it's 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 just one of those things where I don't I don't see anything it's really hard for me to go that's really weird or that's out of the normal I mean Carmen's about as weird as it gets <laughs> oh, I had to throw that one in there oh god I love her um well, but yeah they, I mean because everybody just keeps keeps me laughing um we had, uh, let's see, Tiffany worked on a Bronco Connect project. So one of the things that I've been able to do the past few years is work with Lisa Garcia out of our business connection office. And she's housed in HCOB, but she's actually um, someone who services the whole, whole WMU community. So she gets a lot of calls for companies, small companies or entrepreneurs or nonprofits that, look, that are looking for marketing help. And so she tries to put people into classes that do like group projects and whatnot and i do group projects no big deal but i wanted to my my main goal before i i left before i leave western was i really wanted to develop a student-run advertising agency or marketing agency so that students could get uh internship experience before they graduated and actually worked on a project that had real ramifications so that the client could actually use their recommendations or use their creative output um, for, for real purposes. So um, Lisa had approached me about, I don't know, I think we've been working together for maybe about seven years now uh, for a project about in marketing for marketing research. And I was like, yeah, I can do that in my class. And I said, what, and I told her what my idea was. And she's like, oh no, you, you should do that. And I said, oh no you know, you should do it with me. I'm <laughs> like, I needed a partner in crime. Hi, Brandon. Um, and so we've been, we've been doing that. And Tiffany was working on one of our projects, one of our first projects, I think, the Blue Line Club. I think you worked on that one. Um, was there another one you worked on too? Do you remember? I think there was. I think you're muted. I'm unmuting you. Um, but uh, we I had a couple of the like, alumni association. Oh yeah, we did we did one for the alumni association too. Yep. So uh, we spent there were many times for those case competitions and for those Bronco Connect projects where we were at HCOB until like one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, um, finishing up details, just like any project, right? So, and I, I specifically remember I, I I'm almost positive it's your group, Tiffany. We were there late one night and we came out and the the parking lot was really snowy, and I slipped. <laughs> but I made it look like I was do like doing a barrel roll on purpose and then I was doing um, snow angels in the middle of HCOB parking lot. <laughs> so that was fun. I mean, those are kind of fun memories that we that we have. So, so late night just went to, uh, oh, crazy. Just went to, she was one of my very first uh, student groups that went to the AAF competition, the American Advertising Federation competition. It's like the premier ad student competition. And I think it was only my third year in 
and um, you know, Western was not really known for its ad program. Um, most of us, most people didn't know who we were, what we, what we were, um, what we were about. And we were up against big hitters like Michigan State and Ball State University who would like bring in a busload of students who worked on this project. And Jess's group had like six <laughs> or seven students. And uh, we took second place that year in the regional. And she got to be a, she was on a team that was like a national qualifier. Um, so, but we got, we didn't make it past the national qualifying. So we didn't get to go to the big race, but um, that was probably one of the biggest highlights. And I took another team all the way to Washington DC for um, a first place in a different competition. So we had, we've, yeah, those are really good times. And, and those are really proud moments. That. but nothing weird i don't nothing know crazy. Nothing crazy we're just <laughs> we're just I, we're just normal in our weirdness or, or it's just normal to us right yeah, yeah it's normal yeah. <laughs> well on well, a more people personal think I'm weird anyway so you know they come in the class I mean, and they... that's and that was my next question about you personally so i know that you've said you're weird and i've heard that you're just lots of fun so i'm curious what uh what you've been doing besides walking the dog to have fun during this whole craziness or any reading anything that we need to know about or any shows we should be watching hold on i'm reaching <laughs> this is the book i'm supposed to be reading right now can you oh it's backwards sorry the power no, of and we see it um responsible business without trade-offs so that's that's my that's my serious reading to do. I've read a couple um, really good books on, uh, on race and social injustice. Um, so I've been trying to educate myself on that. Um, I've watched a couple movies to that end on that. Um, I have, I, you know, if, if, if I watch TV, which I, I don't watch a lot of TV in the summertime because I want to be outside. So I have a pool, which is fighting an, which is fighting an algae problem right now that we're really upset about. But um, so most of the time I spend outside and you can usually find me on my convertible, which is also known as my zero turn lawnmower. <laughs> so I, I like to ride around on my, um, on my lawnmower. I mow our lawn like every three days or four days or something like that. And then I, know, then I mow the neighbor's lawn across the street because he's a little bit older and he had a stroke last fall. So we help out over there. And sometimes I do my neighbor this way and I like to ride my mower. <laughs> well, I'll come that's looking the, that's for the you. story my husband likes to say <laughs> talk about he's like yeah he brought it home and and not, and said that um I always said I would never want to ride that and then I had to help him one weekend when we were having company and he was running around like a chicken with his head cut off and he's like will you will you mow the lawn for me and ever since then he's never been back on it so I like it that much so yeah we're looking to upgrade but um I did I I did remember I do remember a story, a funny story, um, just as we were getting into that. And this was uh, in one of my students from Marketing 2500 when I was in the auditorium these past few years. Um, usually on that first day, uh, I'm really amped up and really juiced, right? Because it's the first day of class. I'm super excited. Um, and usually the four letter words are flying. Um, just because I'm so, I, just because I can't self-censor and I don't want to because it's who I am. So I, you know, a lot of students after that first day, that first experience, <laughs> first experience are like, oh my God, what the heck did I get into? Like, who is this lady? She is absolutely off a rocker. Um, but maybe I'll stick around and find out if I learn anything. And uh, so this, this one kid um, uh, was like that. He's like, this woman is crazy, like cray cray. And uh, apparently he saw me at one of the hockey games. And I was in the section, you can't miss my husband because he's got short, spiky, like Billy Idol blonde hair. And so you really can't miss us in the stands because if you find Dan, you'll find me. I'm sitting right next to him. And so, you know, we're over there, we're lost and lunaticking and doing the chants and cheering on the, uh, the hockey team. And the student is with his girlfriend over in the student section. And he's nudging his, his uh, girlfriend. He's like, look, 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 look over there that's my professor. That's the one I was telling you about. Like, like crap. He's telling me. About. And she looked over and she's like, who? Dr. J. 
no way, that's your teacher? She's my boss. And it was one of the um, uh, business connection interns. So one of the people that were like working on a project with Lisa and I, um, she was our graphic design student. So she would have never really had me as a professor, but she had me as sort of like a supervisor. And so her boyfriend was in my class. And so th then of course it was like, so he had to come up and tell me like the next class period, I saw you at the hockey game. I pointed you out to my, my girlfriend. I told her you were crazy. <laughs> I'm like, great, thank you so much. I love it. So that was fun, fun. That was fun. Uh, awesome. But uh, yeah, I'm, um, you know, life is pretty, pretty standard here. Pretty, uh, pretty, there's nothing, to be honest, and even though we're in COVID-19 times, there's nothing that has really been all that different for us. Um, luckily, I guess we're lucky because yeah. it's just the two of us here at home. So we do the same things. I'm, I'm prepping for classes. I'm hanging out outside. I'm walking the dogs. I'm walking a lot as much as I can. They haven't played as much golf this year as we wanted to, but hopefully we'll start playing soon. Um, yeah, house projects, really boring adulting things. Nothing terribly crazy for all of us. I know. Well, on that note, I know there are a couple people who had some questions, and I wanted to give all of you a chance to talk since it is such a small group anyway. Um, please shut me up. Kind of, did I shut you up? No, I said please shut me up. No, they want to. They want to hear <laughs> from you. Else talk. I will say this. I know that sometimes I jump on to things like this and assume I don't have to talk. So. Sorry to surprise you all, but we're going to let you talk now. Um, and I, I saw a couple questions in the chat. So oh, I, I, and I know chat. here, what's the last <laughs> one? Advice to marketers or advertisers. And you and I kind of talked about that. So, and I know you had, were curious how, what these guys were all dealing with too, because I had asked not being in marketing, Dr. Atkin, what like, what's going on in the industry, what thoughts she had about the industry, and she let me know that HCOG really thinks that marketing is in every industry, right? So yeah, marketing, yeah, marketing really isn't an, an industry. I mean, there's, there's areas, I don't consider it one. Um, there are aspects of marketing that have sort of spawned their own, some of their own industries, like market research or advertising and promotion, um, agencies, um, digital agencies, um, things of that nature, but you know, if you think about any business that's out there, they should be marketing in some way, shape, or form. Even nonprofits—that's the really hard part, right, Chris? Um, is uh, marketing for nonprofits because everybody's wallets are tightening and they don't want to spend a money um, in these unprecedented times. Um, what did we? What did we find out in our research that people wanted um, reassurance? They wanted. Um, Consumers wanted to know how their how products were going to make a, a, a positive impact in their life. Um, I've been wanting to study um, how brands get involved in social causes. So in light of the pandemic, we've had all this uh, racial injustice and um, all these other issues that have cropped up and other issues that have cropped up. And some brands have been harnessing that sentiment and trying to incorporate it into their messaging and some have done it successfully and some have failed. So I think they, it's really about understanding your consumers. So in these unprecedented times, um, I think that you have to focus on what you're doing well and you know, what your core mission is, uh, what do you do well? Um, now's the time to start thinking about what you don't do well and maybe strategically lop some stuff off, even though that's going to hurt. Um, you're going to be better positioned for the long run. Um, and really understand what your consumers want because they're the ones driving your business and understand how their behaviors have changed because they have, I mean, we, we might not, Dan and I might not be eating out every week like we used to, or as much as we used to, but we still go to restaurants that offer, um, dry, eat, not drive through service, but pickup service, things of that nature. Um, not on DoorDash or Grubhub or any of those things yet, but, um, but our behavior has changed when it comes to how we consume certain types of products in certain industries. I feel for retailers because I'm a retail junkie. That was part of my background before advertising. So I feel for um, especially downtown retail shops, but I feel for the big retailers too. 
I haven't been in a Kohl's or a TJ Maxx in like four or five months. It's that's weird. Talk about weird behavior. That's super weird for me. Super weird. Damn. Because I'm a shopaholic. <laughs> My closet, right. looking all my clothes in my closet are looking at me and like, pick me, pick me. And I'm like, <laughs> where are my sweatpants and my Broncos <laughs> t-shirt, right? So that's about it. That's about so it. true. So true. Um, one of the other questions was what the title of the book you read on social justice. Oh, was. shoot. Um, check out my Instagram account. I took pictures of it. Um, okay and posted it on there, but one that, um, oh, Brian Stevenson, isn't that his name? Um, there was a movie, one of the books I read, one of the first ones I read uh, was just recently turned into a movie. I should Google that. Um, but that was one of the first ones I read. And one of, in fact, it's one of my alums um, that actually turned me on to that. He's now the executive director at Urban Alliance in Kalamazoo. I don't know if, you, if anybody in the Kalamazoo area um, knows Urban Alliance, but they worked with, they work with um, um, sometimes, a lot of times felons, like people who, have, who are being reintroduced or people who are incarcer incarcerated for one reason or another. And they um, are trying to be reintroduced into society. So they provide skill sets, especially like um, trade skills and stuff like that. And they try and help reintroduce them, reintroduce them back into society with a, with a job and get them back on their feet again. So um, they've worked with uh, KVCC. They were going to work with Western, I think, and possibly in our supply chain area. Um, but I don't know if that ever came to fruition, but we did a, um, a business connection project. Lisa and I did a business connection project and one of our alums totally redesigned their brand identity. So it's, um, so the stuff that you see for urban Alliance was created by our team. So that's kind of cool. Um, so those are the, those are, I wish I could remember that. I should know the name of that. Up. Urban just put it up for a, so yeah. you want to talk about Ray. Yeah. yeah. And between the world and me. Yeah, those two. Yep. Thank you. And the other, the if you uh, if somebody Google's Brian Stevenson, I think it's his name is Brian Stevenson. He's big into social justice. He's a lawyer, um, and it's his book. It's kind of about his experience. So it's really, really, really good. You all want to ask your own questions. You're welcome to do yeah. that. But I will ask this one from Joseph. Yeah, I see um, it. How have the growth of digital platforms, social, OTT, streaming, et cetera, changed what's taught in marketing and advertising over the last 17 years? Oh, Just Mercy. Thank you, Camp Carmen. Yeah, that's what it's called, Just Mercy. Um, oh, Joe. Um, <laughs> I wish I could say that we have been able to keep up with the change in technology, um, but academic academia is so slow to respond and and to get change done um so what has been happening is that instead of really offering brand new classes even though we have although we do offer a couple new classes in the digital area is that bits and pieces are being brought into other courses you know, so, um, and I, I don't know if that's really the best way to do it, to be honest. Um, and it's hard to get people to change or to update their teaching methods or their teaching content sometimes. So, um, which is part of the reason why I got out of the advertising program is that I wanted to sort of help the marketing major better with that particular area and uh, help develop a digital marketing and e-commerce um, major and to try and introduce new courses because if you every time you try to introduce a new course it's like well who's going to teach it and and if who's going to if, if you don't have somebody who can teach it then we have to hire somebody and well man we don't have the budget to hire somebody so it's really it's been really challenging and um again there's only so many times i want to hit my head against the wall before i get totally discouraged but um, we have been able to hire a new prof his name is scott cowley and he's pretty awesome um, his specialty is SEO, but he does a lot of other digital stuff. So he teaches our digital and social media marketing class, and he also teaches an advanced uh, digital strategy class. Um, 
so those are two courses that are required in our digital marketing and e-commerce major. So there was a major that was started by Dr. Parker. Some of you remember Dr. Parker from, <laughs> from previous um, years when you were here and she sort of started the internet marketing class. And so that's what uh, Scott's class took that class and sort of made it um, more relevant um, and not sort of like the history of Google or the history of the internet. It's more um, hands-on applied learning uh, in terms of the different tools that you can use. Uh, in marketing 2500, like in the big auditorium class, I try and um, harp on it a lot when we get to the promotional area, but to be honest, um, technology has impacted every aspect of marketing. It's how we develop products has totally changed, how we price products has totally changed. Um, distribution is you know so weird now because we always thought about place as being a physical place and now it's um, now it's not I and mean, it can be anywhere um, you can get things delivered anywhere it can, if, it's all about convenience um, and product and, and place is basically wherever the consumer is now um, so I I try and bring in a lot of um, not a lot but a handful of guest speakers when I can in that big auditorium class to touch on some of these more uh, contemporary issues. So I usually have someone from um, uh, food and consumer packaged goods come in and talk about uh, place and price and the relationship between those. And uh, I bring in a couple people every once in a while to talk about promotion, but I feel like I can kind of handle that one myself. Um, with the exception of, you know, back in my day, we were using tape cassettes and VHS recorders <laughs> to distribute commercials. That's too funny. I'm so old. So, so yeah, and you know, the focus on analytics too, quantitative. So that's one of the things, that's another area that I've sort of harped on in our marketing department. And we've got a new marketing analytics class now. So, and that's required in our major. So we're trying to um, slowly but surely make some changes to be, to make sure that our students have the skills that are relevant for when they, when they leave um, and graduate. And the interesting thing about, you know, as it relates to, um, as it relates to like the ad and promo program, many of you probably remember Greg Gerfin maybe coming in for ad club and doing a guest, um, guest speaking engagement or whatnot. Well, he's, he's been teaching for us the past few years. And I had, a, I had asked him, I've always asked him cause I lean on him quite heavily because of his expertise in the area. And I always say, Greg, what, what do we need to do different in this, in the curriculum? And he's like, you know, the principles don't change. I mean, and the steps don't change. It's just that the tools change. So instead of thinking about TV and radio, now you got to start thinking about Hulu and Spotify. So, you know, it's just, you just have different tools to execute your strategy. So I'm more of a, a strategy person anyway. I'm not really good about um, tactics. I'm more interested in why do you want to do something and how can we make sure it's going to happen? So, and I think that's still the focus of good marketing. Any talk about event marketing curriculum to the ad major? Not that I'm aware of, Tiff. Um, I know that's over, it's over in another college still, so. Education, human development yeah. still, right? Yeah, yep. They still ship DVDs to TV networks? No kidding. <laughs> DVDs now. <laughs> Pretty soon that'll be like old school. That'll be really old school. <laughs> <laughs> betas yeah oh lord uh what are you hearing from employers as the fundamental skills they need from new graduates um quant skills um soft skills um a big emphasis on soft skills um uh, trying you know not uh somebody who doesn't want to look in the back of the book for an answer you know somebody who can think for themselves um, someone who's not afraid to ask questions, um, being able to communicate <laughs> up and down and across generations, really important. Um, so some, so some of those types of skills, at least right now, but I know, you know, the digital skills, the quant skills in terms of marketing related stuff, um, and the soft skills, you know, I'll always, you know, if you can get inter if students can get internship experience before they leave, that's a bonus too, but um, it's going to be it's going to be challenging the next probably 18 months I would say for for students coming out. I don't think this is unlike what when we went through the recession in 2008 and 09. I think that graduates are going to 
um, have to be persistent and show some grit. And, uh, and, and I hope that that's, those are some of the skills that uh, we hope we can develop better. Right? Because they're not the same as you guys. I mean, I'm looking at, I'm looking at the faces that are still on there. You know, today's, the students that I see today are not like what you guys were. So I know it's sad, Carmen. <laughs> it's sad. There's some, you know, there's, there's still the handful. There's still the cream of the crop, but, um, but as, as a quote unquote generation, I've seen big, I've, I've seen big shifts and I never thought I'd say that, but there have been, I've seen them. So, yeah. That is true. I, Carmen says she was a student ambassador, and I can tell you that's true of the ambassadors too. <laughs> Although we still love them, they're so great, but it's, they're just different. They are. So, um, well, I would love if anyone else has memories of Western or memories of Dr. Atkin or competitions or anything. You're welcome to share those. Otherwise, share I'll them. yeah. <laughs> Share me your favorite memories. We can ask her one more question otherwise. <laughs> I know you get on and you don't want to talk. I get it. <laughs> can you um, tell us then, Doctor? You can't. You can't unmute yourself. Who, who's unmuting? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me unmute you. I'm trying to unmute you. You did it. I was just going to share a story of when we went to Chicago for the like. It was a job fair. I don't remember why we went. I just remember it was a trip to Chicago with the other seniors and it was great. But I'm pretty sure it was a job fair. And yeah, it was probably the Chicago Advertising Federation. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. And we were on our way back. Uh, we carpooled together and we 100% got off on the wrong stop in Indiana. And we had to walk like five miles with our uh business suits and our suitcases and what i forget where it was where we got off of but it was not a good neighborhood and it was like 2 a.m we had to walk to our car five miles down at a different train stop and that was just i think that was the year i didn't go <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely i'm pretty i'm pretty, pretty sure Dr. Part of that, but it was me chris it was my whole group me chris it's your group. sam uh ashley uh jordan jordan, jordan. and uh oh my gosh but yeah it was just fun it was yeah. it was pretty crazy and that was <laughs> we're still on recording though but some people were still yeah some people were still happy yeah very happy <laughs> <laughs> we're coming down from happiness <laughs> Uh, that's funny. <laughs> I just wanted to share. I'm Sanja. I'm Carolyn Hardy's uh, colleague over at Heritage. But for the sake of the person who was uh, talking about the event marketing, it's Deb Droppers over in Human Performance and Health Education. Mm -hmm. Deb Droppers. I've worked with her on occasion over the years. Um, she has expertise in that area. She's managed several. Uh, events downtown Kalamazoo. In fact, she has her own her own company. Yeah, she has her own um, consulting company. Yep, she sure does. And um, she'd be a good contact for anyone who's interested in that. Cool. Thank you. I just want to share. First, I um, am old enough to not know what that building is behind you, Hardy. Never seen it. Wasn't there when I was there. I'm also old enough that it was called Marketing 250 and not 2500. So that sounds super <laughs> weird. Um, but I just want to say, um, and I'm sure everyone here echoes this, but Dr. Atkin is one of those professors that um, once she believes in you, you will do everything in your power to continue to earn that belief. Mm -hmm. Because she's one of those people who you get emotional. Don't get emotional. You get emotional. I'm going to kick your ass. Okay. Thank you. See, that's it right there. It's the tough love kind of belief. <laughs> Once she tells you like, yep, you're great. Keep doing great. You will do anything you can to never let her down because when someone like that believes in you, you just, you hang on to that. So Brandon down here called me like out of the blue this, I don't know, a few months ago, wasn't it, Brandon? Uh, I, can you hear me? 
Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, I think it was in March when the pandemic kicked up. And I, I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to jump in and kind of follow Jess's comment that, and I'm sure a lot of us feel the same way. And I, I told uh, Dr. J when I talked to her that I remember very specifically working with our group, our, our senior project group and, and working on that. And work, we had Coca-Cola, which was just awful. I, uh, I hate Coke now. Um, I didn't like it then. Anyway, we worked really hard on this and, and we spent so many hours and we busted our butts and we presented it and she looked at all of us and she said, you guys can do better. And we all kind of looked at each other and we were disappointed, but we were like, man, she's really pushing us because she knows to get how to get the most out of us. And it, it really, I, I told her this uh, a few months ago, that comment alone has been ringing in the back of my head uh, for the last 13 years. And every time I think, I think I've done enough here, I can hear her voice going, you can do more, you can do better. I know, I believe in you, you can do a lot better than this. Try again or develop that further or push that more. And so that's something that really meant the world to me and has always been in the back of my head and, and kept me doing more um, throughout my career. And it's, it's, paid, uh, it's paid dividends along the way. And I really appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah, Tiffany, um, Tiffany had posted a, a picture when she was working on something. I don't know if you were working on another class project or something, and there was a picture of me somehow nearby, and you were like, Dr. J is always is always watching. And uh, it's, it's kind of correct. It cracks me up. There's, you know, there's some, there's some interest. I've had really interesting groups over the years, like in that, in that campaigns class that most of you guys have gone through. And um, I've had, I have had teams that have come in who assume that they were better than everybody else. And then they ended up not, you know, not beating out another team who they thought was weaker or they were because they weren't the favorites. I'll never forget. I had a team. It was the Coke. It was a Coke project. It was, it was either the same year or the semester after Brandon. And it was a, um, a group of, um, of all guys. And they, they formed their team. And I was just looking at this team and I was thinking to myself, Oh my God, <laughs> like slack city. You know, I just thought this was like the slacker group. They were, it was, it was ridiculous. And I don't, and every time I met with them and like every meeting that I would have with this team, they were always so far behind everybody else and they were goofing off and being weird. And then it came to a day where they, they had to present in front of an outsider. I had a creative guy come in, former creative director come in and sit with every group and they had to sort of pitch their idea and say what was what. And they came in and they pitched this, this idea and the creative director was like, that's it. That, I mean, that's the way to go. And I was thinking to myself, I cannot believe that these guys pulled it out of, you know, their, you know, what, and, uh, and pulled it together. It was, it was incredible. So I think it just, you know, I think it's, a, it's one of those experiences that even if you don't get quote unquote picked to go to the competition, um, just the experience of building something in a team environment, and getting and getting feedback, you know, two, three, four times a semester in terms of really challenging what you what your strategy again. What is your strategy, and can you defend it? Um, that really really helps you when you get out and you have to pitch those ideas to your actual clients, overcome those objections. Kind of like sales, but not really. I just had lunch with Aaron Wood, who was in my group. It was me and six girls, so that was a real hoot. <laughs> um, <laughs> there was some time anyway. Um, and we were talking about how frustrating it was to see essentially what was our campaign come mm -hmm. to life and start seeing Coke with all these beautiful colors yeah. and all this stuff, this creative stuff that basically Nicole had already made about three years after we graduated. And we're like, well, what? That was us. We did this already. Like, <laughs> oh, at least we knew we had something. <laughs> Maybe yeah. our presentation wasn't perfect, but we knew we had something going. <laughs> yeah, I know, for sure. A little vindication. Were you on that, you on that team with Rachel? Was um, Raquel on Raquel. that team? Yeah, yep. Raquel. Yep. You know, she, yep. um, see you, Jess. Love you. Um, she, um, she works for, she works on a team yeah. that handles that client now. Oh, gosh. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's kind of funny. She's like, I, I worked on this as, uh, you know, on yeah. a student, and now I'm working on it in real life. So, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What else is um, going on, guys? Yeah, I was going to say, if you all, I can stop recording at this point, although I, there is a request <laughs> for a hockey chant. No, I'm not doing a hockey chant. 
Me, you're so silly. <laughs> They're so rude. <laughs> Maybe once I stop recording. I know. If you, I'll tell you. I'll tell you my favorite one though is when there's more than one um, opponent in the in the sin bin together. Uh, I don't know what that. I don't know that one. But <laughs> when there's when there's more than one opponent serving a penalty and they're in the box together, that's my favorite chant. <laughs> oh, good memory. Well, you you the reason why they are asking for the chant, I, I think, is because your reputation precedes uh, from those hockey games. <laughs> so they know what they're gonna get. I know it's yeah. it's uh, and that's a whole you know that's a whole nother story too in terms of um how how we got into that. I, I remember going to my first hockey game and thinking, oh my gosh, this is so slow. You know, it's nowhere near, <laughs> nowhere near watching, you know, the Red Wings or whatever. And uh, and I rem and they weren't very good the first time I saw them. And then I ended up having a, a couple of hockey players in my class. And um, they were like, Dr. J, if you ever need tickets, just let us know. You know, one was from Pennsylvania. Um, Mike Lewandowski and then Matt Federico was one of our goalies um, so Mike was a, a defenseman and Matt was a, a backup goalie and then they're like you know our parents never come but we always get four tickets you know for parents and friends and stuff so if you ever need tickets just let us know and I'm like all right so you know I take them up on it every once in a while I'm like hey Mike can I you know can you get me on the list to go to the hockey game and then after that I think after that season um, we were hooked. And so we've been seasoned. But, and then like after a year, I'm like, you know, we should probably really pay for our tickets <laughs> and support the hockey program instead of just getting tickets free. So um, we've, uh, we started, we, we've been season ticket holders ever since. And it's fun because at the, at the time when we first started going, the section that I sit in, that we sit in, is near the Lost and Lunatics. So of course, we're near all the crazies. Um, but it's also the section where parents would sit, you know, the hockey parents would sit and, you know, their girlfriends and friends. So we would get a chance to meet and interact with their parents, you know. So some of them, the students, some of them ended up in my class and I could talk to their parents. Of course, not about their academic performance or anything, but just about their hockey careers. And um, that was really fun. So, you know, it was really fun to meet, you know, Danny DeKaiser's parents and family. I mean, like, you know, and Sheldon Dries' family and some of these guys that have gone off to play um, in the NHL and to say, hey, I remember when, you know, you were just a turd at Western Michigan University and your parents told me all sorts of stories about you and <laughs> growing up and um, to see them succeed is, is really fun too. So um, that's just a whole nother aspect though is um, that's where I get the most joy is seeing what happens to you guys after. And uh, I have a quick story. Uh, so this past year we had the reception where every year the hockey team has a reception at the end of the year. And uh, this year, there were a number of uh, well-known hockey players from the NHL. And Dr. Atkins was there uh, bidding on some items. And I think you got two or three items on that, on those uh, raffles. Did you didn't? That, yeah. No, that it was, was more than a raffle. It was a bidding auction. It was last, um, it was last. It was two years ago, year. two years ago already. I think it might have been two years ago now, um, but they do a they do a friends and family night before their uh, golf outing, and of golf course, outing. They, yeah, the golf outing is canceled this year, so there's no yeah. gathering or whatnot. And they yeah. do a silent auction, and um, and we bought <laughs> we bought a crap load of tickets, and you know we're just putting it in on everything, and uh, yeah, we won. I think I won three sticks. And, um, and then we won the, uh, the silent auction was to go to the final four for the, um, for hockey that was supposed to be in Detroit at Little Caesars that got canceled. Yes. So we're kind of bummed about that, but it was, it was pretty funny. I, it, people were just like, they're like, she's winning again. She's winning again. Yes. We were all saying that. Yeah. Though, though the year before was even better because I, we were bidding on, there's us and another couple that were bidding on going to Las Vegas when they did the icebreakers tournament in Las Vegas. And so uh, we got into a bidding war with uh, this other couple, with some other boosters, essentially. And it was, um, it was crazy. 
the guys just go nuts. They're like, "Go, Dr. J, go, Dr. J." <laughs> so um, I end up, I end up getting quite a few of them in that big lecture section of Marketing Twenty Five Hundred. They, they find me. They come and find me. They're like, "Hey, she likes hockey. She'll be nice to us when we travel." Yes. I try, oh, but they don't get know. special treatment. You know that. So I would guess that. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I will go well, ahead well, and lost everybody. I know a lot of people looks like probably took their lunch with us. So I'll, I'll stop recording. If the rest of you would like to hang out, you are welcome to do that. But I, I would like to say thanks for coming. We appreciate it. And hopefully you enjoyed reconnecting a little bit. Um, we'll do some more of this kind of stuff. We're all virtual now. So we can, we can get those of you who are around the country and hopefully you can jump on and do some more of this. Um, and if you ever have any questions or need anything from us, you can always email Hardy or me um, or connect with us on LinkedIn. I know or me. Dr. <laughs> Dr. Atkin has a big LinkedIn following. So yeah. any of us are happy to help with anything we can too. So thank you. There's, uh, Carolyn, I don't know if you know this, but you probably don't know this, but um, one of the main reasons I stay on social media is so that um, so obviously I can follow them and stalk them and find out what's going on in their life. But um, generally speaking, they'll announce whether or not they have, um, they have a new addition to their family, like people have babies. And uh, Tiffany, you're not there yet, but um, Carmen and Brandon, you have kids, right? But uh, usually, if I, usually if I see that there's a, there's a new Bronco coming, coming, to the, uh, coming into the world, I send um, onesies and Bronco baby bibs out to them. So, and you'll probably see, and if you've been, on, Carolyn, if you've been on my Instagram account, then you've probably seen some of them. Um, but that's something that I do too. So I'm, I feel really out of it because I haven't been able to send anything out since March because all that stuff is in my office. So I'm going to have yeah. to go in and grab some of that stuff. But anytime you need any Bronco gear, just let me know. Come for a visit. Oh. You can get gifts and advice. I know. <laughs> Not that they need it. They're all pretty successful. <laughs> Doing well. We're glad. And thank you, Dr. Atkin, for joining us, too. I yeah, appreciate it. And it's been fun for me to, to get to know you as well. So thank awesome. you, guys. And, and go Broncos. Yeah go, yeah, go Broncos. That's as much as you get, Carmen. <laughs>